I had not planned on videotaping this and then at the last minute decided to after I began sanding. So I'm sort of backtracking now to present the materials that we need. So of course we start out with this acacia wood cutting board that features three serving tools. This board has already been taped on the back. I've done that already. So I would ordinarily say you need the um, painter's tape. And then of course, because it is a wooden board, I always prime it with gesso. And we need a brush. Once the gesso dries, I am going to do the background in the Master's Touch Ocean Green. I want it a little, I want it lighter instead of darker. So I'm going to be using the Master's Touch Ocean Green acrylic paint. Once the paint dries, I am going to be adding this piece of art this sea turtle. The request was to create a board with a sea turtle and we will apply that sea turtle artwork using silhouette tattoo paper. So this has been printed. It will be printed out on the tattoo paper and then applied to the board. And then we are going to enhance the image using the Extreme Sheen, Deco Art Extreme Sheen colors. So let me move this back. So for the shells, I am going to be using Extreme Sheen Pink, I don't know how to pronounce that, Tourmaline. Extreme Sheen Pink Tourmaline, I think it is. And then on his belly, I am going to be using the Extreme Sheen Aquamarine. Is that clear? Aquamarine. And since there's a lot of purple on that, I'm also going to be adding the Amethyst, the Extreme Sheen Amethyst. And of course, I'll be putting that on with a small paintbrush. And then once the art is dry, we then seal the art in resin. And so of course, I have my Craft Smart. Oh, I just got this new package. I'll pull that up. My Part A resin and my Part B hardener. We'll set those there. We'll need a small measuring cup, stir stick, and nitrile gloves. And that should do it. So anyway, I already started sanding this off. So I am going to continue sanding this and then I'll prime it with the gesso. Then I'll get the little background paint on it. We'll get the art on it. And then tomorrow we will resin. Whenever I am sanding, I don't use the big respirator. I just use these hospital, you know, these COVID-19 cover thingies over my, over my nose. And I also always have my vacuum handy just to collect the dust. So, so let me get this sanded off of here. So here we go, the board has been uh, sanded. I removed this artwork that was on here that said cheese, and I'm just gonna rub this down with some alcohol to clean this board and get rid of all the dust. Okay, so I have already printed a copy of the sea turtle I'm going to use just onto a piece of white um, copy paper. And I've just cut along this outer edge. And just since these are on an angle, I'm not going to put it straight. I'm going to try and follow 
I'm going to follow this line with my turtle and so I am going to put him right about there and then I'm just going to trace this line with this pen, pencil and then that's where I'm going to apply the gesso. And instead of this being a straight line, I'm going to make this edge a little ragged. I'm going to make that edge ragged so that we don't have a straight line. The green will be basically the ocean or the water. And again, anytime you are putting art onto wood, the wood is dark, so you want the base to be white or, or a light color so that the colors that you are applying are more vibrant. And we, of course, want to do the edges. A lot of people only paint the top or add color to the top. I like to have my color run over the edges so that when this is sitting on the table and you're looking across at it, you have a nice finished look. I guess I could take those tools out, but they aren't going anywhere because they're recessed. This is a very nice set. And this is a premium piece of Arcasia wood. I do mostly bamboo, but uh, this was a good price on this. We're just going to elevate that so that it can dry. And then I'll come back in about an hour and then I will paint the background in the ocean green. Okay, so. I have the um, Master's Touch Ocean Green, and so we're just going to paint this on here uh, as a background color. Again, want this edge raggedy. Now we can paint everything 
else. Make sure, see how that, that gesso is showing there, that white on the bottom. Make sure when you're painting these sides that you're getting down at the bottom. going to let this dry and then we'll come back in a few hours and attach our sea turtle. Cheap brushes are good for this kind of stuff but just notice how much this brush is shedding. That is not good. And then we'll come back and um, I have printed this onto tattoo paper and so we're going to then tattoo her right down there. In order to get the uh, really beautiful sea turtle image, I use a site called Creative Fabrica, and they have millions, I mean millions, of uh, pieces of art, of uh, fonts, just, just a lot of stuff that creative folks can use. And so I go to Creative Fabrica, First thing I do is I go to the POD bundles, which is print on demand. Um, there are two types of licenses on Creative Fabrica, print on demand and commercial. Print on demand means that you can use the artwork just as it is. And so I go right in here, I click on POD, and then I go into search, and I type C, turtles or sea turtle, singular. And then what comes up is a list of different pieces of artwork that you can select and download. Lots of choices, lots of artwork. And so the one that I chose is, we'll go back up to the top. I chose this. I thought this was pretty. And so you hit download. And then the artwork is downloaded onto your computer. 
and then you can open up that folder. Oops, wrong folder. And then you can see this image as JPEG or PNG uh, with a transparent background or with a white background. And so I just downloaded that and then I printed it onto the tattoo paper. So that's how I got my artwork. All right, so this is all nice and dry, so we can get rid of this. And let me turn this like here. Okay, so I printed the image of the sea turtle on this silhouette tattoo paper and you get two sheets in a package and so you put the paper in your printer with shiny side down and then this is how my image came out this is the shiny side this is the dull side and then you also have to use this adhesive piece of paper and so what we do is we remove this strip at the top of the page like so and then that allows you to line this up it's off a little bit but that's okay um, actually I'm going to do it on the board because the board is firm and then this green paper you pull this green sheet, <clears throat> you carefully pull this green sheet off, and then you want to carefully let this sticky sheet go on to the artwork. And try not to get any air bubbles in this. Okay. So we now have our <clears throat> We now have our sticky sheet on here. So I'm going to take the scissors and I am going to cut the turtle out, cutting as close to the image as I can. Okay, so then I am going to place this turtle like so, or like so actually, because it's in reverse. So let me, <clears throat> let me turn this. And so I then have a cup that has a damp sponge in it. And so what I'm going to do <clears throat> Is peel off that sticky paper that I put on here I can grab it and get it started okay so we're going to peel off the sticky part that we just put on sticky paper <clears throat> left on there we go okay so now oops sticky paper is off so we're going to turn our turtle over and we're going to lay our turtle 
like so. And then as with any other tattoo, we're then going to dampen the paper backing. then just go over it again make sure it's nice and saturated and you can already see right there the paper has started to peel oops what did I do with that uh, razor blade I had I just do it with a razor blade okay that's already that's moved a little bit so now I should be able to carefully the paper if I did it correctly and voila Ooh, I like her I like her Woohoo! or that way however there you go and so I always like to just go back over this with my sponge and just press down to make sure it adheres correctly. Oh, I love it. And again, this is a lot of steps, but when you get what you want in the end, you don't mind doing all of this. So, now that that tattoo is on there, I'm going to leave this set, and here we go, for another hour. And then I'll come back in and I will start embellishing her with these uh, deco art paints. And I think I might just put some glitter on her shell. I think I, think I might just add some glitter to her shell. But for now, we're going to wait yet another hour and then we'll come back and we will get her painted. All right, she's dry. And so this is when the real fun begins. So let's see. I am going to start with the Extreme Sheen Pink to do her shell. So this is when the real fun begins. I am going to put glitter on this because I want her shell to, I 
want her shell to like just grab you. And so I'm putting some of this extreme sheen on here. And before it dries, I'm going to throw some glitter on here. And again, it'll give it some, some pizzazz, it'll jazz it up, but it will also give it some texture. I think her shell needs some texture. And so again, this is not a real careful painting of her shell. This is more a filling in, making a base for the glitter to stick to. Instead of putting varnish on here, because ordinarily if I were using glitter, I would paint the shells with the clear gloss varnish. Where's the varnish? I would paint the shells with the clear gloss varnish and then sprinkle the glitter on that. But I'm going to use this extreme sheen instead because I want to make sure that there's a lot of color underneath the glitter. And we don't want a lot of glitter, we just want a little thin layer of glitter to add some texture. And so, On there and I need to get a sheet of white paper. Let me take these tools out because I'm going to have to turn this over. So although I didn't have glitter in my materials, I am going to add um, this raspberry extra fine glitter to her back again for a little bit of texture and a little bit of bling. That's nice. I 
like that. Woohoo! All right, so now, um, where's my toothbrush? The only thing wrong with glitter is it gets on everything. Okay, so we're going to continue with our pink. And so, we need to change brushes. And wherever we see pink, we're going to add pink. Okay, and let's see. We'll do the purple in here. There's a couple of different, there's a, a purple, there's a purple, and then there's a lavender. So I have the amethyst, but I think, I think I have another, I do, I have something called Lavender Frost, so I'm going to use these two. And so again, if you're watching the video, you don't really want to sit and watch me do each of these. That's fine. Because this is, is tedious, detailed work. It's funny because these are a lot of different colors here. And your colors don't have to match exactly. And I'm not going to do every single one of these spots, just a few of them. Again, all you're looking to do is enhance this and give it some texture. Actually, I have a green that I can put under his head. But 
this uh, PBO acrylic. It is um, iridescent. So this is really pretty. So I'm going to put a little bit of that under his neck. Her neck. I'm calling her. I'm calling my turtle a her. And since I only need a dab of this, I'm not even going to put it in a container. I'm just going to think we really need to do um, anything else to her maybe make her eye stand out a little more where's my black um, okay um, obsidian let's see what it looks like on here that's enough I'm not going to do anything with those lines I was going to go over these lines right here but I think I'm going to leave that just like it is okay anything else we need to do to her think that's enough I think that's enough so we're gonna let this dry and then because uh, it's late now so I'm going to let this dry overnight and then tomorrow I will add the name under here and then we will seal this in uh, resin So, in order to get the name on the charcuterie board, I am using my Cricut Joy machine. I have typed in the name Lestowski. I have selected the font, uh, which is Market Saturday. I've added this little squiggly line, sort of representative of water. And then we're going to hit Make It. I am cutting this out on a mat. We hit confirm. Uh, that's not the one I want. Let's go down to the blue. We hit continue. We select the type of material, which is the shimmer vinyl. 
we then load our vinyl into the machine. And then we come down here and we click go. That little curved line on the bottom is giving me a little bit of grief. Okay, well you get the you get the gist. Uh, we're gonna clip that. We're gonna clip that to get that out the way. And I will finish weeding this, and then I'll add the um, transfer tape to the back, and then you'll watch me put it on the board. Yeah, it's gonna take me a minute to straighten that out. Off camera, I went back in and I took the um, I took the paintbrush and I added some little wave lines. It's a little darker lines to this so it wasn't just such a plain palette. And so you just saw me um, print the name and I then put the name on uh, the transfer paper. And so now I'm going to transfer that name. And we're going to put that name right between the flippers. paper is pulling up some of my transfer paper is pulling up some of my paint it's always fun when you're doing a video showing someone how to do something and then it doesn't work correctly but that's okay. You also need to see what happens when things don't work well and how we fix it. Okay, there's her name. I'm gonna have to take my paintbrush and touch up a couple of those spots right there. And so now we need to raise our board, mix, mix our resin, and then we can seal this and be done. So now we're going to mix the resin so that we can seal this. One other thing, last night um, before I went to bed, I started thinking about the fact that these knives said cheese on them, and I just decided that these should match the board so I taped them off and then gave them some color as well so we're going to have to uh, put resin on these as well so let me I am taking the tape off of these because I'm going to resin these <clears throat>
just with a little top coat. I'm not putting resin on the entire, I'm not putting resin on the entire handle, just the tops. But I think that looks so much nicer. So let me get this off of here. And I'm going to quickly sand the little bit of white on the edges here that shows up from where I put the gesso. I'm going to sand that. Just hold on a minute. Okay, so uh, I am mixing 60 milliliters uh, to do the clear coat on the board. 30 of part B. Thirty milliliters of part A. And again, mixing according to the manufacturer's instructions. It'll be five minutes. And I like, to, I like to use a palette knife to spread my resin. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I don't push this all the way to the edge to the end of this paint until after I've used the heat gun because once you put the heat gun on this to pop the bubbles the resin will expand and when it expands it spreads that's the other reason why I haven't done the edges yet all right so then we'll take the heat gun and pop those air bubbles Okay, and we will let that set for about 10 minutes and see how far this resin spreads. Okay, so I am back. And if you look, you can see this is spread over here. So I may need to add a stick under this cup. So now I can begin to push this up to the edge and just kind of feather that. I don't know, is my hand blocking the view? And now I can put resin on the sides. And again, you put it on the sides, this is going to run right off, but at least you put a base so when you come back and add some more, it will stick. But this is gonna run right off the sides. Now where this is running off on this side, I'm going to take a paper towel. I use the 91% isopropyl alcohol. And we're going to take that and we're just going to wipe along this edge. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just cover this and I'll be back in about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, coming in to check on this, 
Again, you'll see how the resin has moved over on the edge here. So we're just going to take this stick. And we're just going to scoop. Just put that back on here. Scoop, 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 scoop. Put that back. And then take a cloth and wipe. Okay, and so now we want to make sure that we have resin on the sides. And see, that's not dripping right down because it's thicker now. It's had time to set some. After I went to bed, I decided I did not like that the tools said cheese and decided the tools should look like they go with the board. So I got up and I painted those last night. Um, again, with the lighter ocean green and then that uh, more metallic color. We're going to cover this and let this cure overnight. Okay, we are going to uncover this. It is the next day. And so what we're going to do now is, this is, this is gorgeous. And I came in a couple of times and just wiped that edge so that edge is true to the paint. So we're gonna flip this over. We are going to heat up this tape and get this off of here. Very nice. Ooh, very clean. That's what you like when it comes off the way it's supposed to. And now the other thing we want to do while this edge is still warm. Is make sure that we trim if there's anything to trim. Let's see. Yep, we got a little bit. Trim that. That is trimmed. And now we're just going to take my sander <clears throat> and go right along this edge to make sure that edge is perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to take my sander. This is like a really clean, this is a really clean job. But I'm going to take my sander I'm going to sand this edge. Okay, and I need to brand this. Let's see. We 
made up most of it. This is a harder wood. Oh, wow. 